Coming up on Mayo Clinic Q&A. The liquid biopsy just means you're getting information like you would from any biopsy from some form of liquid. So that liquid can be blood, it can be urine, or in our case, we perform it on the spinal fluid. A spinal fluid biopsy is a straightforward procedure that is now used to detect the metastatic progression of cancer cells and can help determine the treatment plan. Essentially, you're, you're sampling that fluid to find out, are there cancer cells there? What they are? What do they look like? Welcome everyone to Mayo Clinic q and I'm your host, Dr. Helena Gazelka. When cancer spreads from its original location to other parts of the body, we say that it is metastasized. Central nervous system metastases occur when cancer cells spread to the brain and the spinal cord. Treatment for CNS tumors can help ease symptoms, slow tumor growth, and extend life. In order to determine which treatment might work best for a person's tumor type, some healthcare professionals are now using liquid biopsies. Here to discuss is Mayo Clinic neurologist, Dr. Wendy Sherman. Thanks for being here today, Wendy. Yeah, thank you for having me. What an interesting topic. Uh, first of all, can you tell us, Wendy, what causes cancer to metastasize or to spread from other areas in the body to the brain and the spinal cord? No, that's a good question. And I'll, and I'll tell you that, you know, there are, there are multiple different ways that cancer cells can reach the brain and the spinal cord. Um, you know, it can enter through the bloodstream or through the, the lymph nodes, or sometimes even if it is in the bones of the spine, because the spine is right next to the spinal fluid and to the spinal cord, it can invade through there and, and enter that way. So there's a few different, few different ways they can sneak in. Is it possible that any type of cancer at all can spread to the central nervous system or CNS as we call it? It is possible, but there are some players that are much more likely to go there. I, you know, the three most common ones we see are, are lung cancer, breast cancer, and melanoma. Those are the um, by far the most common that we see, but, but we've hmm. honestly have seen all, all kinds spread there. The, the other kinds are much rarer. So let's get to the topic of the day. What is a liquid biopsy? It's a good question. So, and, and it can apply to different things. So, you know, really liquid biopsy just means you're getting information like you would from any biopsy from some form of liquid. So that liquid can be blood, it can be urine, or in our case, we, we perform it on the spinal fluid. So that's the fluid that coats the brain and the spinal cord. And so essentially you're, you're sampling that fluid to find out, you know, what, what cancer... Are there cancer cells there? What they are? What do they look like? You know, what mutations do they have? So we're trying to get as much information, just like you would if you had a brain biopsy and were to take out that piece of the tumor and look at it under, under a mic microscope and send it for testing. Same kind of thing, just off of, off of fluid. Well, but that brings up a good question then. You lead right into my next question, Wendy. <laughs> when would someone decide to use a liquid biopsy instead of doing um, a surgical um, or tissue type of biopsy. Sure. So, in you know, in our case specifically within the neurooncology field, we use it on the spinal fluid most commonly when we're worried that there are cancer cells in the spinal fluid. So, someone can have cancer cells in the brain or the spinal cord and not necessarily be floating around in the fluid. Mm -hmm. um, but if it is in the fluid, that's very difficult to get by biopsy. Um, you know, people can try to biopsy the the meninges or the lining of the mm -hmm. sac that holds the fluid, um, but that can be a very difficult biopsy too, and often can be inconclusive. So, if we if we suspect that the cancer cells are in the fluid, that's the right time to do this test. Okay, so you might have just answered my next question then, okay. <laughs> which is, can you use this for any type of tumor? So uh, currently, yeah, no, I mean that, and that's a that's a question because there there are there's testing available currently for specific cancer types. Okay. Um, so for, for breast cancer and lung cancer and GI cancers, gastrointestinal cancers like stomach cancer and such. Um, in more in the research field, that's being looked at for other cancer types. So it could still be done for other cancer types, types but that's still for research purposes and, and for you know, the care of the patient in the clinic those are the primary cancer types that we can look for. I can see one very obvious benefit to patients in that it is simple 
to receive to remove cerebral spinal fluid. It might sound awful to patients, but it's com very commonly done in a fairly straightforward procedure. But do you see um, improvement in outcomes for individuals who have um, cerebrospinal metastasis and have a liquid biopsy versus a tissue? I absolutely do. And I'll tell you, you know, in, in our day and age of treating cancer, it's no longer one size fits all, right? So we have excellent drugs for different cancer types that are really based off of your specific cancer. So not just your lung cancer, but does your lung cancer have a specific mutation? And there are drugs that match up to the mutation that have been very effective. And the tricky thing is that if someone has a cancer, in, let's say in their lung, and they have a mutation, let's just say an EGFR mutation, that's a common mutation that a lung cancer can have. We know that upwards of 50% of the time when that cancer travels to somewhere else, particularly in the brain, it can change, meaning it may lose that mutation. So if you treat someone based off of that information you know, that you had a couple of years ago from where the cancer started, that may not reflect you know, the current state of your cancer and what it looks like. And so our treatment really depends on that. And with, with a lot of these new generation treatments that are going after these mutations, it has been very beneficial to look for those in the spinal fluid. And it, it absolutely, I would say, has extended how people do with this and, and um, both from a symptom standpoint, because we're able to give them often drugs that are better tolerated because they're more targeted. Um, and also it seems to extend survival. That is really interesting, Wendy. I'm sure that many of us have never thought about the fact that a tumor cell that came from our original tumor and is now somewhere else in the body isn't exactly the same cell necessarily. True, and, and I think it's increasingly being recognized. Um, you know, a, another example would be, you know, a breast cancer. People talk about HER2 positive breast cancer and there are drugs that match up to that HER2. And we can actually inject those HER2 drugs into the spinal fluid if the cancer cells are in the spinal fluid. And so it's all the more important to know once it's in the spinal fluid, is that HER2 there or not? And it, and it can change. We've all seen it. So there must be limitations. What are some of the limitations of using liquid biopsy when you're wanting to treat metastases? Well, so it is still a newer test. So, you know, we're we commonly, prior to having this test, we had cytology. And what cytology means is when you sample the fluid, it tells us, yes, we see cancer cells or not. It doesn't tell you how many cancer cells or what their mutations are. So we still do run that test. The, this new test we're doing is a lot more specific. So we do get a number of cancer cells. And like I said, you know, we do get the, the genomics of it too, or what mutations it has. Um, but we're learning, we're learning. And I think um, you know, for example, we've all had patients where maybe the cytology results and this test don't always line up. And so we're studying those cases so we can understand how to incorporate both, both sets of tests or both data points. Um, but it's, you know, it's a test that we can draw while we're, we're sampling fluid anyways. So, you know, for example, in patients who are getting treatments in their fluid, while we give them the treatment, we can pull fluid at the same time and send for this test. So you're right in that it's it's a relatively you know low invasive um, low level of invasiveness when we do this test. And I think just as as we continue to do the test and we do research to another cancer types, we're going to learn more about how we can apply it and and how sensitive it is. Well, speaking of that, is Mayo Clinic doing research on the use of liquid biopsy? So we are, um, and it's, it's exciting because, you know, we want to learn more about the use of liquid biopsy, you know, particularly as it pertains to, to spinal fluid for not just our brain metastases, but also for our, our cancers that start in the brain. So the ones that don't travel from other organs, and we're not there with that test yet, but we're looking, we're looking at that. Um, and then also, can we use other, other fluids in the body? You know, like I said, urine, blood, those samples are being collected and tested so that hopefully we can make progress towards that. Wendy, how widely available is this test for patients who may not be at a Mayo Clinic but are listening elsewhere? So as long as it's for those approved indications, like the breast cancer, lung cancer, and GI cancer, it's a commercially available test that insurance is, most insurances do seem to be covering. So this is something that you could request 
you know, from your from your physician outside of Mayo Clinic. Um, but also here at Mayo Clinic, you know, we routinely do this and, and are, um, you know, happy, happy to do that as well. Well, thank you so much for being here today, Wendy. This has been a fascinating conversation. Yeah, thank you for having me. Our thanks to Mayo Clinic neurologist, Dr. Wendy Sherman, for being here today to talk to us about how liquid biopsy is being used to treat metastasis into the uh, cerebrospinal fluid. I hope that you learned something. I know that I did, and we wish each of you a wonderful day. Mayo Clinic Q&A is a production of the Mayo Clinic News Network and is available wherever you get and subscribe to your favorite podcasts.